Hello, everyone. Let me get the volume up. I turned the volume down on our little jingle opening because I know it was loud. So I turned that down. Now I'm just getting set up and getting ready to welcome all of you back to uh, a live Fast and Fun Projects with Noreen. So I'm just watching here to see if we've got any eyes, any thumbs up, any comments coming in. Looks like I'm connected to both Facebook and YouTube, so that is a great start. I do want to preface today by saying we're in a bit of a thunderstorm here where I am, so fingers crossed the thunderstorm and the weather doesn't affect the internet. I thought we were, you know, past the wild weather and now that winter's over, but we are having a bit of a thunderstorm, a bit of rain out there, so fingers crossed it doesn't interrupt. Here we go. We've got a bunch of gals coming on. We've got someone from Florida, Jennifer from Ferndale, Washington. Gina's here from Colorado. Hi, Gina. Barb's here. Barbara's here from New York. Ruby from Colorado. Gina's here as well. Gina's saying no sound. So I think give me some thumbs up or let me know if you can hear me. Uh, I'm, I'm all set up. It looks like I'm okay. So double check that, uh, that we've got sound. If someone can let me know that they can hear me, that would be great. Uh, there's Cindy in Williams Lake. Hello, Cindy. Hope you're doing well. Um, someone from New Zealand were, uh, joining us. Of course, it's Thursday, 10 a.m. there. Thanks very much. I'm, I'm getting the thumbs up saying sound is good. So Gina, if you still can't hear, do a little bit of, uh, tippy tap on your device and check the volume and all that kind of good stuff. Good. Thank you, everybody. All right. So I'm very glad to be back with you live. If you watched last week, we had a little bit of problem with the uh, Facebook uploading, but I was at home office in Minnesota. And uh, as we were at home office, of course, we started seeing all the sellouts of the embellishments that I was showcasing. So it was pretty fun to kind of run out into the warehouse and stand in the pick line where all of your orders get packed and do a little update for you about, uh, you know, the fact that everything in the video you weren't going to be able to purchase because some of them were sold out. So it was a great trip. We had very, very productive time, met with designers, met with the amazing production team. Our, our CEO was there. We got lots done, and boy, oh boy, am I ever excited for all of the great stuff that we are bringing you in the future, later this year and, and beyond. So it's a great, great time to be there uh, with all of those folks planning and thinking ahead. So really good stuff. But I'm back home now in Calgary, and spring is definitely in full force, and with the temperatures we're having and even these thunderstorms, we are definitely thinking about summer as well. And that's what we're going to be talking about and kind of playing with today. Sweet summer, and we're going to create some delicious, uh, re uh, not recipes, delicious <laughs> uh, projects here. And we are going to be using one of the recipe templates. So all of these food analogies are getting me off track a little bit here. Uh, we've got lots more gals joining us. I'm so happy you're all here. I miss being with you live. Happy to be back. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Uh, we've got folks from Illinois, California, Ottawa, fellow Canuck there. That's great. And as well, we've got Brisbane, Australia, Florida is here. Welcome to everyone. So I'm going to go ahead and switch you over to my table so we can talk about Sweet Summer. Isn't this a gorgeous collection? Now, if you didn't have a chance yet to have a look at it, I'm going to show you a few things and then we're going to play with it. And including the Sunburst recipe template. So there's again that whole food reference that I was stumbling over earlier. We're going to use the Sunburst recipe template. If this looks familiar, it's because it was a favorite uh, that was brought back. It was from 2018. So again, we really, we really hear you. Uh, and, you know, and judging by the number of requests we had for the Sunburst recipe template, that's part of the reason we brought it back. So we do listen. We do want to hear from you. Make sure you keep those product suggestions requests coming. We do read them and we do consider them. So 
thank you very much for doing that. So we've brought Sunburst back along with Sweet Summer because, of course, it just naturally goes together for all of those beautiful, you know, beach sunsets, beach sunrise, summer sunrises. It's always so beautiful, so it's a great time to bring it back. We also brought out a fun BMC called Sea Star Chain. So we're going to be using that. And, of course, Sweet Summer. Who is in love with this palette of colors? Okay. Uh, I know I am. And here's a fun thing. So you may see on the corner here that we've started. This is our first collection that we're putting the coordinating cardstock swatches right on the insert. And here's kind of a fun little fact. We actually began creating this collection by pulling these cardstock colors. So we were talking about summer. This was way last fall. We were talking about summer. We thought to ourselves, what colors would be really popular? And we knew that purple was really popular based on Electric Summer from a few years back, 2020. And so we started playing with the cardstock. We came up with this palette and our amazing designers came up with this collection. So we've got a stripe that has all of the colors in it, uh, some you know fun clouds up in the sky, a gorgeous sort of, um, it looks realistic, but it is uh, you know an artwork style of beach scene. We've got starfish. We've got the summer sweet treats like the lollipop, or not lollipops, popsicles. We've got some beautiful coral mixed in. We've got splatters and waves. Those could either be, you know, lake waves, ocean waves, or even kind of, you know, currents in the air. We've got a great text page with all the fun summer sayings. Love that. And then I think this is my favorite. I absolutely adore cut aparts because the cut aparts give you so much flexibility. You've got the, the solid or the multicolor, not multicolor, sort of a tonal um, background, but then you've got all of the multicolors on the front with all of these great little icons, journal boxes. They can be the base of an embellishment cluster. You can use them, you know, and add title stickers to them. You can cut these out. It's just so versatile. So I love all of the Sweet Summer papers. So we're going to play around today, and we're going to focus on using the Sunburst template and the Sweet Summer papers. And we're going to get that sweet uh, C Star Border Maker cartridge in there too, okay? So... I want to kind of talk about the recipe templates because I know that in the past many of you have said love the style of them but some of them only have one photo and they are a lot of work you know for just one photo so many times we'll take one of these larger uh, template areas and try you know to fit a photo underneath uh, let me just use it with this one here but you know you have to sort of angle the photo and it, it doesn't always work out unless you have an enlargement. So I'm going to show you a way where we're going to get three photos onto a layout, but we're still going to capture that gorgeous sunset. Now, of course, you can put your photo in here. Let me grab a four by six little card. You can put your photo in this way, or you can put it in on a horizontal. And of course, you can turn your template around so that you can have a really wide variety of, you know, looks for that sunburst, for those rays that emanate from the photo. Now, of course, you could go ahead and make the template and then you could add, you know, another one down here. So I could put, put one here and one, there's another four by six. There we go. And I could put one down here, you know, so I could do something like that. But that's a lot of work to cut and, you know, trace and cut all of these pieces. So I'm going to show you a way that I've kind of come up with to add more photos, but keep the look of the template. And I'm relying on a technique that if you are a stamper, you will be familiar with, and that is masking. So I'm going to just, I've got the, the logo down here in the bottom right hand corner. I'm just going to turn it so that the logo is in the upper corner up here. And that's the orientation that I'm going to uh, 
going to work with here. Let me get these out of the way. There we go. Um, so what I want to do is I want to have that sunburst feel, but I want to get three photos. I want to get three photos on here somehow, and this isn't going to work. So I'm going to actually mask it off, and I'm only going to cut portions of the sunburst shakes. So here is a six inch, let me double check, yeah, six inch by 12 inch piece. And I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to cover over part of the template. And that means I'm going to just cut these areas above and below. So I'm just covering over that whole section. Now, obviously, you know, that's not going to help me as I'm doing my cutting. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some uh, painter's tape, or you could even use some, you know, some washi that you don't love. And we're just going to go ahead and tape right over this. So let me see. I'm going to I'm going to take this apart here so that it doesn't get stuck to the to the cardstock underneath. And I'm going to place it just above this line here. Okay, so I'm going to tape right across. I hope that was a big enough piece. Okay, I'm just going to tape right on top there. And then let's double check where, if this is the top, I'm going to just tra uh, just mask on the bottom of this line here, which is where my photos would go. So we're just going to take it and mask that part. Okay, I can hear the thunder. I hope everything's going well and you can all still hear and see me. Okay, so that's kind of masked it off. Now, of course, as I go to pick this up, the back side of the masking tape is stuck to my thing. So I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to go ahead and just tape over the back side of the tape. So now when I use my template, it's not going to stick to my paper. And I just saved the pieces that I used earlier when I was kind of testing this out. Okay, so now I have a mask. So now all I need to focus on is cutting and tracing these top parts and these bottom parts. So that, that eliminates a bunch of work because I'm just going to be putting this 6 by 12, 12 by 6 piece of paper across my page anyways. Okay, so if I don't have to cut and trace all of these pieces in here, why, why would I do that? Why would I, you know, have, use time and energy and paper, of course, to do that? So that's what my, my template is going to look like. So let's talk about tracing and cutting these now. And I just, I'm just going to do one because I have traced and cut a bunch already. But I just want to give you a couple of general tips for when you're using any recipe template. So oftentimes we'll have little pieces and we are tempted to just, you know, put it in there so that our shape will cover the paper. No, yes, our shape that we're cutting will work with the paper below. But I would encourage you to keep the paper as if it was, you know, as if you were looking at it just in the right orientation and then make your... Uh, shapes fit that. So for example here, I would place it like that and then I can go ahead and trace and cut this shape. Then I'm going to get a true representation of the paper and the pattern as opposed to doing it this way. And that's sometimes I think what happens when we're trying to use up scraps. We just want to make the paper fit. But then sometimes, remember we were talking about text for example. If I went ahead and sort of you know, if I had a piece that would fit this way, when I view my finished page, my text might be going in the wrong direction, or it might look awkward, especially if I use it again in a different place, and this time it's going in this direction. So if you keep your paper always oriented in the way that it would if you're looking at a full 12 by 12 sheet, and then place your template pieces on top there, and then trace and cut. Then no matter which shape you're going to trace, it will all work together. So I know that sometimes people say, why doesn't my template look right? You know, what did I do wrong? You didn't do anything wrong. You were doing exactly what you should. 
but you didn't necessarily think about the pattern directionality, okay? And I have to say that in a template like this with diagonal lines, you want to stay away from stripes because they're going to look really weird, especially if, you know, you've got a ray shape going this way and then your stripes are going this way or you're trying to, you know, fit them in somehow. So I would stay away from stripes. They're really hard to work with in a template. Stick with something that, you know, uh, is easy to move around and manipulate. So I'm just going to go ahead and do one for you, just in case you haven't seen how this works. I've got a little piece of this fun sky and clouds. So I'm going to just place my template and I'm going to cut out this shape right here. So I'm going to make a little less work for myself by placing the top edge, the straight edge, right at the top of my shape. Let me get a pencil. I don't know why I didn't have a pencil out already. Ah, where's pencil? Here we go. And then make sure you're holding down, especially these little connecting pieces, because sometimes if you get a little too, you know, overzealous, they do move on you. So hold them down and then draw between. So that way I only had to draw three lines because I use the edge of my paper for one of those shapes. All right, and then we need our microtip scissors or all-purpose scissors. I just like my microtips. And I always try to cut just on the outside. That way I've just, of my pencil line. And that way I've got just a little bit of leeway. It's always a, a little better to just cut it just slightly bigger than you think you need than too small because if it's too small you can't make any corrections or adjustments and then you have to start all over again whereas if you cut it just slightly bigger you know just a hair bigger if you need to make a little trim or anything you can do that so then I just go ahead and trim it up and then I always like to use, this one's very well worn, uh, White Artist Racer. So a Stettler brand is great. That's the one I've been using since art school. And just hold your paper firmly. Don't rub back and forth, but rub with the edge of the paper. And you should be able to get those pencil lines off. The other thing I'll just mention about, you know, tracing and erasing, try to use a slightly soft pencil. Don't use a thin, mechanical, fine tip, hard pencil, because not only will you, you know, it be harder to erase, but you're going to press down into the paper and you're going to leave a little groove. So I like a soft pencil and my white eraser. Okay, so now you can see that this would be a perfect fit for this shape right here. So when I put it down, it's going to be the right shape. So I've gone ahead as I mentioned, and I cut all of the pieces that I'm going to need. So here is that same piece that I already cut. It just has a bigger, a bigger um, cloud in it, okay? So that's what I'm going to use. So I've gone ahead and I've done all of the pieces above and below. So let's get started here and I'll just show you what I'm going to be kind of working with. So these little pieces at the bottom, they were great. They were easy to do. Okay. And I'm also, oops, there's the purple. There we go. I'm also going to ask for your advice because I'm not sure what color I want to um, use as the base. I've got so many beautiful colors here that I'm just not sure what I want to do. But you can get a really nice sense here of how all of those shapes are going to look. So now I, I haven't had to waste paper or time cutting those whole shapes. It's just the ones in the area that I masked off, okay? So I encourage you to have a look at the templates you already have, and if there's certain areas that you don't want to, you know, use, think about, you know, blocking them off with a piece of paper that's going to be big enough for, in this case, you know, three, three and a half by five and a half photos, but I still get the look of that, um, the rays. And of course I could do this on the side as well and have three 
five and a half, three horizontal photos. Okay. So now's your time to vote. I'm going to use one of our coordinating card stocks and I think all of them would look good. And of course I could use white, black, or even the beige as a nice neutral. So if you scrapbook directly on pages, on refill pages, of course, you've got, you know, white, you've got natural, which is a little bit darker than beige or black. So those would all look great as well. So the black base, someone is saying, that would be good. I think the black would actually look really nice as well. Let's take this part off and see if we can do this without disrupting too many pieces. Yeah, see the black base is going to look pretty striking, I think. The only thing is, is it might not look really summery. That looks like almost like a stained glass. That's gorgeous. That would be great for stained glass for sure. Um, what color is the yellow? It's actually tangerine. And I know as soon as I bring it out, can you see that the, the autofocus on my camera, the color changes? So go back to purple on the top, for example, and the color changes anything that's in those really warm tones and the light goes cooler. So again, let me grab the, the front page of Sweet Summer. So again, the coordinating cardstock, five colors, tangerine, island waters, dark sea green, purple ice, and eggplant. So I'm getting a bunch of different colors. I've got a bunch that are saying the dark purple. So maybe let's try dark purple. We all love the purple. This isn't the final place, but yeah, that looks really nice. So let's go with purple. I'm casting my vote as well for purple. Okay, so let's go ahead and quickly adhere these down. So when I adhere, I bring back my template. I'm going to get out the repositionable. There we go. Okay, so I'm just going to just tack two corners of the template down so that I always have it in the right spot because it does, you know, it does move a little bit as you're playing with it. Did I get the right ones? Okay, let me get all my pieces out from underneath now. Big ones at the top, small ones at the bottom, and let's go ahead and adhere. So a little bit of repositionable. I'm going to tuck that in there into place. And, you know, obviously the tracing and cutting is always the most time consuming. Once you decide, and decision making, I guess, right? Once you decide, it's pretty straightforward to get all the pieces in place. Okay, that's almost there. There's my coral triangle. I'm going to get a little bit extra at the top there. All right, now I disrupted the apple cart here. But what I tried to do is I tried to think about the raised sort of crisscrossing. So coral is here, and I sort of thought it would be down here at the bottom. You can do, you know, any kinds of color combos that you want. There's the kind of the cream colored shells. So that's going to go down here. You could have done coral here, coral there, cream uh, shells and stars there, shells and stars here. So it's whatever you sort of decide that you think looks good. Okay. Let's see, a little bit off there, but when, when I uh, pull it off, I'll see if anything needs to be uh, trimmed. That's one of the reasons I'm using repositionable here, even though these are slightly larger pieces, because it's going to allow me to pick them up and trim them if I need to. Okay. All right. So everything's down. Let's lift this off. There might be a little bit of repositionable on the corner. There we go. That looks great. Now let's go ahead and adhere our large six by eight piece. I'm going to use regular tape runner for that. Now don't worry too, too much if it doesn't match up exactly. Now this is pretty, pretty darn close, but we're actually now going to, um, 
add our C star border maker cartridge pieces over top of this. I'll just get that into place here. Okay. Every time I move, it pops up. Okay, there we go. All right, so now we've got this nice base for our photos uh, and we've got this kind of seam. Now I did a pretty good job measuring and again, one of the reasons I like to keep it just a little bit longer is so that it'll overlap. You don't wanna have a gap there. But now I've still got room to actually use my C star chain. So here, I thought it would be good. Where did I put my other piece? I'm always losing things, you guys. There it is. So remember we talked about the stripes and I mentioned that using stripes in these angled pieces might not look the best, but I'm going to actually use this striped multicolor piece for my C stars for punching my border because it has all of these colors. Each of these colors kind of reads as a solid, you know, the purple ice, the dark sea green, kind of a, you know, light turquoise, the blush color, and then a coral. So each of those, even though they have some pattern in them, really read as tonals. So this is going to be a great kind of bring it all together. So let's go ahead and punch a C star chain, sorry, backwards here, C star chain border. So if you haven't used the border maker cartridge before, I just opened up the gray paper tray and lifted up the blue magnetic arm. I'm going to slide my piece of paper in here and then press down the blue arm and we're just going to flip that gray paper tray away and it's just going to snap out of the out of the way there. Then I take the uh, border maker cartridge housing, pop my cartridge inside there so that the little teeth are sticking out and those little teeth will just fit right into the notches on the back here. So they're going to lock in place and then you're going to punch using the punch mechanism. So I'm just going to put the paper inside there and you'll feel those teeth and notches lock in place then you can just move it along until it locks in place again. Oh, that's going to be pretty. Like rainbow sea stars. You know, when we were at, when we were on Vancouver Island this, uh, this last month over spring break, we went to an aquarium and I had never seen like green and pink sea stars before, but really they are multicolored. So isn't that going to be the perfect little finishing touch there? I love it. And I did go ahead and I punched uh, another one here. So now I can use the template, as many papers as I want, plus the C stars. So I really think that something like this is great because you, you kind of have the best of all worlds. So now let me get my little cards here. And what I would do, I don't have any photos right now, but I think I'm going to dig out the photos of our trip and use them on this layout. But I would adhere my photos and then I would, I would probably pop these up with some foam squares because you've got some solid spaces there for, that would fit, you know, some of these solid, um, Solid C stars, what you can get the foam squares on. And if you need to, don't forget to just go ahead and cut the little foam squares in half right on the backing sheet so that you can take those smaller pieces and just kind of nestle them in between there. Okay? So I would go ahead and I think I would raise up my little C stars. And then once I have my photos down, I would put that on top, just overlapping a little bit like that. So I think that's going to be really, really gorgeous. Now, the other thing with something like this is where do you put your title? Where do you journal? All right. So I didn't really talk too much about the sweet summer embellishments, but there's, there's three things you want to get. And of course you can buy the buy it all bundle and you'll get the paper pack the uh, embellishments. Look at these. These are gorgeous. Sorry, you've got the glare. But you've got borders, you've got frames, you've got titles, 
and great big titles too, right? Just so awesome. Uh, then of course there's the map pack and I'm going to use some of the map pack cards here in a second. And then the stickers. And again, so many great options for the stickers. You've got a whole thing of uh, word art, all those fun icons, and then your borders. So there's going to definitely be something that you want. But what I was kind of thinking is if I took one of the four by six um, map cards that had a kind of a title already on it, I could, you know, use that, like I could use something like this and trim it down to the 5.5 by 3.5 and that could just go right in the middle. So let me just audition a couple of these. This one doesn't have a title. It's so cute, but it doesn't have a title. These ones, some are top 10, some are faves. I don't want to cut any of that off. So I think these ones are my possibilities. So the stay and cool would actually work really well because it will pick up all of that beautiful purple we chose as the background and it'll give me a nice big title and a nice big focal point. If I was using diving, you know, um, swimming photos, that kind of thing, I could put that right in the middle there. Again, I could trim it down or I could just simply place it there and then have my photos be slightly smaller. So it's, that's a great way to add a title in there. And if you have a title, um, or sorry, if you choose one that has a title and some room for journaling, you could do your journaling on here. I feel like this doesn't need a heck of a lot else, but if I wanted to make sure that I had three photos, I would choose one of these great large titles like, like Let Summer Begin. And I would anchor it into one of these sort of large spots, maybe something like that. And actually I'm gonna pull one out because it would be just perfect. Our designers do such an amazing job here. This one in particular that I'm thinking, this one that says Summer, it's, 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 they've done the work for us. They've clustered it, they've added stuff to it. Isn't that stunning? That's all you would need. That's it, you're done. Uh, I, I could definitely journal down here. And if I'm journaling on some um, dark paper, of course I could use my silver metallic. That would be, you know, really nice. Get the fine point there. So I'm just gonna put, because I think I'm gonna use um, the photos, I'm going to put, you know, April 2023, but you can see how that kind of shows up. So love that. And again, whether you're using a die cut or a, um, a sticker, you know, maybe you're going to add a fun, where's the rest of my stickers? Maybe you're just going to add that sun in there Let me get it off the sticker sheet all of those little cuts. So even though that has a little, um, a little saying on it, I could just overlap and put let summer begin just like that. So that's all you'd need. One large, beautiful die cut embellishment or a couple of layered stickers and you're good to go. So I love that. I love that I'm getting the benefit of using my little border, using the recipe template, but also kind of blocking off that nice center section there to get my three photos. And again, if you're just joining us, don't forget that of course you could turn it sideways like that and have, uh, you know, horizontal photos. Okay. So I think that's pretty versatile and I think that would be fun as we saw when we put these pieces on black it almost looked like stained glass windows. So especially something like that would be a gorgeous use of this template. But if you have some sunset, sunrise, or marine life pictures that you want to use, that's the way to do it. Okay? So I love that. And uh, as I mentioned, the Buy It All bundles, which I think go until this Friday, uh, or maybe it's May 10th. I'll double check and I'll put it in the notes. But that's the paper pack, the embellishments, the stickers, the, um, the die cuts, the map pack, all of the good stuff. And I believe the Buy It All bundle also includes our fun Sea Star chain. Now, I did see a question. Oh, yeah, there we go. 
I did see a question scroll by about how to store the templates. And I'm looking at it right now, but I can't get to it because it's over there in my bookcase. But I store all my templates inside the 12 by 12 fill and file sleeves. And then I have a whole binder for templates. So that's the way I do it. A lot of people keep them in um, a plastic bag. I know that they come in the bags with the self-adhesive flap, which isn't always the easiest to get them in and out. So you could definitely use one of the zip, 12 by 12 zip bags that your paper comes in and just slide it in there. Put a little, you know, a divider or tab on it so that you know, and you can easily see that. And I've also seen people hang them on hooks. So if you have a pegboard, you can set two hooks. Where did it go? There it is. So that you can hook it like that on your pegboard and you could keep them all on a hook or even on a binder ring, keep them all together like this. Uh, a flat drawer would also work to, to store them, or you could keep them all inside a simple sleeve and then stand the simple sleeve inside one of your pods or in a pods insert. So lots of different ways that you can store them. I would just recommend that you keep the sheet that it comes with. I didn't do it on this one, but I'll often take the template and trace the shapes on the back side of the template so that let me just do that really quickly I won't be able to get all of them I like to make sure I do it with the with the logo down in the bottom corner but I would just go ahead and trace with you know with the dual tip pen all of my little spots that's not a full spot, so I'll have to finish it off. But once I would trace all of the spots on my sheet, then when I take those pieces off, I can actually, or when I trace and cut the pieces, I actually could lay them down on this sheet next to my project, and I'd always be able to figure out which pieces they are. Because sometimes when you have these little shapes, you don't know where they go inside the template. So that's another really you know, handy little tip. You can also use the clips. So when you purchase a template, you have the option of buying them with or without the clips. Uh, as long as you have one set of clips, you can use them over and over again. Some people like to have a set of clips for each recipe template. But yeah, so I would just, you know, keep it stored like that. And see, now I've got it backwards. There we go. So I would just keep it stored like that in whatever um, option works best for me. Uh, the 12 by 12 bag, a simple sleeve, the fill and file sleeves, any of those will work really well, okay? So here's another question. Somebody's saying, what would you do for the page beside it? Great question. So let me just flip you back over to my table here. Anytime you're doing um, a template, many people will use these as a, as a title page, right? So they'll make this up they'll have it ready to go for a title page, you know, McAllister Family Adventures, whatever. But if you want to do a, a, another page, I would simply mirror it. So, and again, having two full sunbursts next to each other might seem a little bit much. There might be a lot going on. But having two pages like this, so you'd have more rays, another block of paper, and a few more rays down here, that would provide a nice band of continuity right across a two-page spread. So I wouldn't hesitate to do this technique where I've masked off part of the template on a two-page spread. And then again, I can get all my photos. See, I move things around because I'm so excited to show you guys things and then I misplace them. So I could do the same thing here and then I'd be able to get three more photos over here. So I'd have this nice long row of photos. I could also, if I'm doing something like this, maybe I have the vertical, or sorry, the horizontal photos on this side, and then do the same page turned and have my horizontal, sorry, vertical photos on this side. So I think you can definitely use that on a facing page. The other thing is I could have just done just, just the top right let's just put like I could have had just a solid border down here or I could have had my paper going all the way and just had the rays at the top there so you could do something like that you could have it just going across the top on a two-page spread or just having it on the sides 
of a two-page spread. That would be really pretty because then it would look like it's emanating from the center. So you could definitely, definitely use this idea of masking off things um, on a two-page spread. Don't be afraid to do that. And again, you have enough time because you're not, you know, you're not tracing and organizing a bunch of extra pieces that you're just going to cover over. Okay. So again, maybe I wouldn't have bothered with the stuff down here. Maybe I just put a border across the bottom and just have my, have my, uh, emanating rays at the top. But I like that. I like that a lot with or without the, uh, the borders. I like the borders because it kind of ties everything together, right? But you could do one border, no borders, two borders, whatever your heart desires. And then that makes it so easy to come up with a title, okay? All right, so we've been back and forth there a little bit, but I hope that you, uh, of course, I hope that you grab the Sweet Summer and Buy It All bundle because, of course, you can save 10% on the cost of the bundle when you buy it in the first 10 days. So again, I'll do a double check, but just go on to your website for your country, creativememories.com, creativememories.com slash au or creativememories.ca. Look under the what's new and you will see the bundle price. Once it's gone, you can still buy the decorative bundle, which is a one click easy shop, but the discount ends 10 days after the products launch. Okay, so you've got until, uh, until that date to get the buy it all bundle and then you're set you're set for the summer and i absolutely love it all right so don't forget to add that sunset recipe template in there sorry yes sunburst sunburst recipe template in there so that you can play with masking or go into your stash see what recipe templates you already have and see if there's some masking that you can do i think a lot of the um the symmetrical borders, like I think Starflake, for example, has, you know, kind of a starburst pattern. Masking across the center of that would be beautiful. And again, you'd only have to do kind of the top and bottom points. Then you could do a full two page spread with your recipe template. So you're really going to stretch how much you, you turn to those recipe templates. They're not just for templates or for title pages anymore. So I think you will enjoy using that. Okay. All right. So I will finish off adhering everything. Like I said, put a couple of photo place holders and then I will mount my little sea star border chains on some foam squares and pop those on there for you so that you can see what this gorgeous layout looks like. We'll make sure that we get that up in the comments. I will double check on the um, buy it all bundle end date so that you can take advantage of that. Okay. Yeah, I think it's such a pretty collection. I, I have to say I'm not a big purple person, you know, like it's not, I wouldn't say it's one of my favorite colors. I don't have any clothes that are purple, but in this collection and in this palette, it is stunning. So I, I'm really enjoying using it. And I have to say, I love that we've, you know, color matched it to five shades of our cardstock and that we have all of our cardstock colors listed right on that sheet for you. So easy, easy reference. You can always know exactly what cardstock colors will be, um, will be matching for you. So you can just easily go. And that's going to be an ongoing feature now. So you'll always see that starting with the Sweet Summer Collection. So we can't go backwards, but we can go forwards. So I know that you're going to enjoy that as much as I do. Okay. So next week, we'll get together next Wednesday, May, is that the 10th? No, it's the 17th. Today's the 10th. <laughs> and we are going to talk about summer travel. So how many of you have plans for the summer? You're maybe road tripping or maybe you've got a big trip planned. We're going to talk about some easy ways to document your summer travel wherever you might be going. Okay, so make sure you put that on your calendar to join me here next Wednesday, May 17th, 5 o'clock p.m. And again, if you're watching on Facebook, make sure you go and subscribe to the YouTube channel and vice versa. If you're on YouTube, make sure you request to join the Creative Memories Virtual Crop Facebook group. Because of course, there's always good things happening in the Virtual Crop Facebook group. We've got Virtual Crop happening soon here, this coming weekend. 
And of course, there's all kinds of extra challenges and options to win prizes, chances to win prizes, etc. So you definitely want to be part of that group. Make sure you're on both platforms so you never miss out. Okay. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for joining me today. Really happy to be back spending time with you live, responding to your comments and that kind of stuff. Hope you got some good ideas today for using your delicious recipe templates and that you go cook up some, some fun summer layouts. All right. Okay. We will see you next week. Bye for now, everyone.